The hugely ambitious Wings of Liberty isn't just one of the biggest games to hit this year, it's also one of the riskiest. As the first of three installments to the long-awaited StarCraft II, Wings of Liberty is putting Blizzard's fastidious production standards to the test, with a game that seems to offer less than initially promised. It no doubt descends from a rich legacy, but still the question must be asked. More than 10 years after the original set the RTS world on fire, does StarCraft II stand a chance of doing the same in 2010 with a Terran-only campaign? Combat suit sealed and locked. <laughs> Damn, Jimmy. You've been holding out on me. Despite gaining a full head of hair, the last few years haven't exactly been kind to Jim Raynor. After losing his lady love Kerrigan to the Zerg, the Terran dog of war finds himself on the lam for opposing the one who betrayed him, not to mention the corrupt government currently under the old coot's beck and call. It ain't over till it's over, you son of a bitch. Wings of Liberty puts you right in his shoes in the midst of his ongoing struggle with the Dominion. What initially starts off as a fight for freedom quickly becomes something altogether more, placing the fate of the galaxy once again in good old Jimmy's hands. If there's anything immediately apparent from Wings of Liberty's story, it's that the series' narrative structure has evolved well beyond the original sparse intermissions. StarCraft II is a world thriving in 3D, replete with fully acted scenes and even a few crucial decision moments that give you a personal stake in the story's development. The writing may sometimes resort to a few contrived cliches, but the delivery behind each uttered line is uniformly excellent, coming together in an epic and entertainingly told yarn that successfully builds on the series' layered mythology. What happened to Kerrigan wasn't your fault. Which part? Was she got left behind? Or was she murdered eight billion people? It's a shame, then, that the seams of separation are a little too easy to spot. Raynor's central conflict against Mengst goes by largely unanswered, and the altogether abrupt ending seems more fitting to the end to a first act than that of a standalone game. Of course, the moments leading up to the conclusion are exhilarating, but without any kind of resolution, at the very least for Raynor or for the Terran side as a whole, Wings of Liberty's tale feels a little less than complete. Everyone's a critic. Adjutant, are my troops ready yet? Your forces are prepared and awaiting your orders, Commander. At its core, StarCraft II is very much the same real-time strategy game that Blizzard perfected in the 90s. What's largely changed in the sequel are all the elements that supplement the series' core RTS fundamentals, expressed in full by Wings of Liberty's genre-bending single-player component. Amidst the backdrop of a non-linear 29-mission campaign, it falls on you as the renegade Jim Raynor to hire out your services for a paycheck in the fight against the villainous Arcturus Mengst. The bounty you collect goes towards persistent unit and structural upgrades that carry over from mission to mission, giving the game an RPG aspect that adds a more personal touch to the experience. All this takes place aboard the battlecruiser Hyperion, a hub that not only serves as the destination for the management of your forces, but also as the site where you interact with the game's teeming collection of technological ephemera and vivid over-the-top personalities. It's Wing Commander, sheathed in the lore of StarCraft, a holistic experience where crew members reflect on the situation at hand, alongside news networks broadcasting disparaging reports of your latest efforts in the field. James Raynor, have you no conscience? It may all seem superficial, but the effect is far from it. Whether researching exotic Protoss technology or uncovering the mysterious Gabriel Tosh's motivations, you'll definitely find yourself just as invested in maintaining the upkeep of your army as you are with keeping up with the latest gossip on the ship. Taken as a full-blown space RPG, it perhaps isn't quite as realized as something on the level of Mass Effect. For something taking place in between the missions of an RTS, though, it's definitely ambitious and well-realized. Wings of Liberty's multiplayer is just as comprehensive by comparison, debuting under the banner of the new and improved Battle.net 2.0. Featuring sophisticated matchmaking, achievement, and chat systems designed to work across all current Blizzard games, it's obvious that the revamped BNet is eager to impede on the territory of similar services like Steam and Xbox Live. The series' hallmark map editor tool is back and better than ever, and several notable upgrades extending to replay functionality, ladders, and tiered divisions bear evidence of the great amount of polish and effort behind StarCraft's grand return to the competitive online scene. If you aren't feeling up to snuff with your multiplayer skills, a set of training drills in the brand new challenge mode aim to get players of all skill levels thinking and playing in the right mindsets. And yes, you get to play with all three races online from the get-go. As a platform for installments to come, Wings of Liberty portends a positive future for the saga of StarCraft II. 
Bathed in additions, improvements, and the trappings of a fully featured online mode, the game definitely earns its keep as the successor to a highly storied franchise. About time we kicked this revolution into overdrive. On a purely mechanical level, issuing orders, navigating units, and clicking your way around a sprawling base retains much of the classic scheme of the original. The game certainly stands its ground among the dawn of wars and company of heroes of today. But in spite of the traditional feel, there are clear signs of advancements that definitely oil the gears of this grand old machine. Control groups are bigger, SCVs are smarter, and as a whole, your base and troops function a lot more quickly and efficiently than ever before. The formula may not have changed much, but the way of interpreting it certainly has, with a suite of interesting new units and mission types that will definitely encourage you to rethink old concepts and quickly learn new ones. Don't stop for anything. Let's roll! Turning the idea of a standard routine and build order on its head, the game's single-player missions will have you exercising your creativity when it comes to overcoming the many obstacles put in your path. One such scenario places the player in the thick of a Zerg-style zombie apocalypse, racing to destroy their vile encampments by day while fending off the hordes at night. Another sandwiches your army against a colony of Protoss bases and a fiery wave slowly raising everything in its path, suggesting the use of the Terran's mobile building feature to continuously set up shop just outside the range of each threat. These missions aim to pose a challenge to be sure, but there's also a lot of instructive value behind each meticulously laid out objective. The solutions you come up with are a lot more practical than you think, carrying well over into the realm of competitive online multiplayer. Not used to microwing a single unit? You will be, after commandeering a single ghost through the entirety of a guard-filled prison level. It may sound intimidating, but the challenge is only what you make of it. With multiple difficulty levels, side objectives, and mission achievements that encourage repeated playthroughs, Wings of Liberty scales itself well. All right, all right, I surrender. If you're talking raw mechanics, StarCraft II is the purest distillation of the ideas and concepts that define the genre. Incoming transmission. Thank you so much for responding to our distress call, Commander. Don't let Blizzard's reputation for creating hardware-friendly games fool you. Wings of Liberty boasts some of the most impressive graphics in PC gaming today, skittering masses of Zerg flooding the screen don't give your video card a workout, the incredibly detailed in-game cutscenes certainly will. It's clear that the studios our team is capable of more than Warcraft's cartoony designs and simple geometry. More than just a pretty picture though, StarCraft II's impeccable visuals convey a genuine artistic ingenuity that few in the business can emulate. If you think Blizzard set the bar in production values in previous efforts, consider it elevated once again. Sweet mother of mercy. As with its predecessor, the sequel boasts expertly handled voice work, with many of the original voice actors reprising their iconic roles. The game's soundtrack is no less diverse, featuring epic choruses and booming orchestral scores paired with the occasional bluegrass and southern rock track. A few minor performance issues are yet to be patched away, but as is, Wings of Liberty's presentation is thoroughly outstanding. If judged solely on its failure to resolve its story, Wings of Liberty could have been a disappointment. But with a production so carefully thought out, masterfully designed, and flawlessly executed, it's impossible to come away from the game with a negative impression. StarCraft II is the sequel that we've been waiting for. Even if it means waiting another few years to see how all the chips fall, it's definitely apparent that Blizzard has crafted a sequel worth all the energy we spent pining for it over the last decade. <laughs>